very pleased with this, this recruiting class. You look at it from top to bottom, what you see is uh, um, a bunch of young men that have uh, different positions that they played and have excelled at those positions. A very athletic group. Um, there's eight states represented in this class. We got into Florida a little bit more than, than usual. Had the ability or opportunity to sign one of the better linebackers out of the state of Ohio, who's now here mid-year and been going to classes now, C.J. Stalker. Um, you know, the New Jersey uh, private school player of the year is in this class, Chris Sharp, he's a running back. And then in the state of, and then the Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia, um, Olamid, and I'm still working on the last name right there, so I call him O. He was uh, the offensive player of, that, uh, of Philadelphia. So we feel pretty good about uh, the young men that have said, yes, you look at this class, you know, you don't see the, the five stars, all the, the glitz and glamour. What you see is, to me, is kind of a, a blue collar type of class. There's a, guy, a lot of guys with, you can characterize with three stars. You know, they're, they're guys that, uh, again, have, have accomplishments in their, at their high schools and, you know, making all state teams and all those things. So feel good about who they are. We, we recruited for, for need. You know, across the board on both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, a lot of these young men were guys that, uh, that played both sides, both positions, offense and defensively. But they, uh, they're going to give us a lot of uh, added depth, uh, a lot of help. Some may have the opportunity to play, you know, right away. But uh, we just wanted to, you know, improve our team. And, and uh, we did that, in particularly closing. Very, very pleased about the way we finished up with uh, having a guy like Chris Beatty on the staff where uh, Dominic Shepard, who's one of the best uncommitted linebackers in the country, we were able to uh, get a commitment out of him. Uh, T.J. Griffin uh, from uh, down there in the Tidewater area, he was another one of Chris Beatty's uh, recruits, was able to come up on an official visit and get a yes from him. So that was, that was significant for us. And so now we, you know, we look forward to um, our spring practices. We look forward to getting a chance to get these young players that have committed to us, get them acclimated to, to uh, what college life is going to be about when they arrive for summer sessions, and then move forward with them. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll take any questions. Coach, we'll start over here with, with Isabel, who's uh, now covering us from the Washington Post. I don't think you've had a chance to formally meet since she joined the beat at the end of December, but she'll have her first question. Okay. Thanks. What, I guess, what did you guys see as your biggest needs when you were putting together this recruiting class? What positions in particular? You know, we looked at uh, the entire roster, and obviously one of the things we wanted to improve was some offensive line depth, and you have, you know, three really good players there. Um, Grant Polk is another mid-year young man that will have an opportunity to get, to get involved with spring practice, as Jake Feeler did last year for us. Um, we, we wanted to, you know, with losing Eli, Harold, and, and Max Vallis, we had to make sure that we shored up our rushing uh, capabilities. And so what you see, you see a lot of linebacker commitments or, or linebacker type bodies, as well as uh, the two defensive ends that are listed, um, uh, Nigel Abdullah and Stephen Wright. They're, they're, they're both 6'5 plus, uh, you know, 230 plus pound guys. We wanted to make sure that we had, we fulfilled those two needs, particularly the rushing needs, but also had the body types that could, uh, the linebackers could play you know, various positions. You know, now in college football, and particularly the, the teams that we play, you see a lot of teams playing with four wide receivers, three wide receivers, and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, this year's defensive group was, was representative of guys that could rush and that could cover, and that, that was a need there. But if you look all the way across, you see, um, you know, four, four players in the secondary. You know, Juan Thornhill is a is a is a safety candidate. You know, very excited about him and you know what he does and what he brings to the table. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had that tight end depth. You know, as we talked about before, and you know Tanner Colley and uh, Nick Bernie, those guys having a chance uh, you know to come in as as young men that are two you know 235, 240 plus. But um, you know we got a quarterback and Nick uh, Nick Johns, uh, two running backs, Chris Sharp, as I said before, who's a size running back. That was that was a priority as well. And, uh, you know, so, you, again, we try to cover as many uh, positions as possible across the board and feel really good about uh, those young men who decide to say yes to us. Mike, you mentioned Chris Sharp. He's taller and has a bigger frame than a lot of the tailbacks that have played here in recent years. Did you want to get a, have a bigger option there along with the smaller guys? 
Well, it, you know, it was, it was important to get a guy that uh, was a, a, had big bat capabilities. And, and obviously, Chris is one of the ones I talked about that was, uh, you know, the New Jersey private school player of the year. And he's a strong runner. He's a very physical runner. And, uh, you know, he can address a lot of needs, you know, that we have. We've got good running backs coming back. But at the same time, you have to try to address the needs. And, and he fit uh, one of those needs. Back here. Yes. Um, I know last year on National Signing Day, you mentioned how you guys wanted to expand into Georgia Moore and Florida. And in this class, you were able to capture three commits from the Sunshine State, including Dominic Shepard. How big was it to get a South Florida commit in this class, especially from a school like Gulliver Prep? No, it, it was big. You know, you, you always take the relationships that coaches have had at other places, you know, uh, Mike Archer, uh, Chris Beatty, and for, cer for a certain extent, Coach O'Brien, Tom O'Brien was in that area. But you, you, you try to attract profile student athletes, profile schools, and that's one of them. Earl Sims, who used to be a linebacker here as the head coach. I was an assistant coach here when Earl was here. And, uh, you know, it just, it just worked out. You know, sometimes things align, the stars align. And it was one of those opportunities that the coach there could speak on behalf of what the school was like and the coaches, particularly the head coach, what he was like. So I feel very fortunate to get into to Florida because then that you know, extends opportunities to stay down there and, and continue to recruit, recruit really good players from that area. Georgia is the same way. We got one player out of there. But you look at our roster, there are, you know, there are, it's dotted with Georgia players. And so those are two very important states to us. Big part of your defense last year was those three linebackers. You, you lost all three of them. Uh, you mentioned earlier that was a, a position of need, but Stalker, is he a kid that you talk about some guys that can go in and play right away? Does he maybe fit that mold? Is he going to get his chance? You, you look at him, you look at his athletic ability, you look at his size. As I said, you know, he just started school in January, and uh, you, know, you can tell he's going to be a big player. Uh, Dominic Shepard. You know, uh, Giovanni Simmons, you know, guys that have played. Giovanni is a, you know, state championship team from, you know, from Ocean Lakes. Uh, those, are, those are the type of body types, linebacker types, that can do multiple things when you're, when you're playing defense. And it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be interesting to see where everyone fits as far as, you know, playing nickel package or a regular package. But we'll have the best players on the field. And, and a lot of these guys present themselves as being pass rushers, defenders and run stoppers. Which one gives you more butterflies, waking up on a game day or waking up on signing day? You know, um, until you get that signed letter, national letter of intent, you're always, you're always wondering how things are going to go. And, you know, as I said before, particularly pleased in how we closed out. I mean, obviously, there was one that the very not too long ago that you know, went to another school, but we were, very, we were in the mix with that one as well. And, you know, you always just want to make sure that you know, when you look back at the process, you've done everything possible. You've tried to address all the questions and the needs. Um, I believe we did that. But you just know that uh, these are 17, 16, 17-year-old 17 guys that are, that are making those decisions that are influenced by a lot of things. And, uh, but, you know, we got our fair share and, and feel good about this class. Uh, Coach uh, Olamide seems to be a similar size to Kevin Parks. How would you compare him to Kevin? Probably very similar. Um, you know, again, he's one that was, uh, you know, the Philadelphia Area Offensive Player of the Year. Fast, athletic, and uh, really physical. You know, really physical. So, you know, it, it remains to be seen how much of a comparison until they actually, until we get him on the field and see how he operates. But when you look at his highlight tape, um, it's, it's, there's several highlights on it of short runs, power runs, you know, returning kicks, you know, things like that. So we're excited about having O. Oh, Went into got somebody from the five four zero for the first time in a while. Talk about Warren Kraft, uh, his athletic ability. Very very excited about uh, Warren Kraft, uh, Kraft. And yes, Doug, we were excited about having somebody from your neck of the woods. You know, um, I, I tell you, Warren is a guy that uh, you know we know. I know you know the story. He had a scholarship offer at Virginia Tech for basketball. I think he might be one of the sleepers of this class because he's very very athletic. Hadn't played football a whole lot. But uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch his basketball highlights. I mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. It's impressive. And knowing that he's a receiver and the go up and get it type of guy, you know, if he could play above the rim in basketball, you know, he can go up and get those balls uh, as far as being thrown in the air as well. So very, very excited about him. 
and uh, you know he he wants to have an opportunity to play early, and and we will afford him that opportunity. And you know it can run. I mean, so synonymous with wide receivers is you know vertical leap and uh, and and and, hor and speed, and and he has he has a lot of those. He can run, he can jump, I mean, very athletic. Mark, you you mentioned Chris Beatty. Um, I mean, going back to his days coaching Percy Harvin, he's been around the, the the recruiting scene. Has he been on your radar, so to speak, for a while when your vacancy came up? Is this someone you immediately thought of and the impact that he was able to have very quickly on your recruiting class? No, without a doubt, you know, David, he is a guy that uh, I knew when he was at North Stafford. And then, of course, he goes to Lansdowne. And, and just over the years, where, whether it's at, uh, you know, Vanderbilt, West Virginia, you know, Illinois, um, you know, I had a chance to, to hire him a couple times. One time I didn't, I didn't hire him. But, um, you know, this opportunity presented itself, and he's paid off uh, – right away dividends and you know doing this now at the end of the season and you know, we're excited about you know what can happen you know as the season goes on as far as his coaching and teaching but also as far as uh, you know his his skills you know, being a recruiter and he wants to be known as a football coach first and, and I, 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 I respect that he's a very gifted offensive mind type guy uh, and a recruiter second but um, you know he has made an impact as well as Dave Borbley who's our offensive line coach who's back I was here as a as an assistant coach here uh, years ago when Borbs, as we call him, was the old line coach. And he's, he's coached some guys that are offensive linemen that are playing in the league right now. So very, very excited about the staff, about the men that joined this program and, and, uh, and then how they can move us further along. Mike, you ended up playing only four true freshmen last season. Because you redshirted so many guys, does that give you more options with this class where you don't necessarily have to rush a guy? and to fill a hole on the two deep? It was important that the guys that were ready to play, that we played them. And, and we were afforded last year the opportunity to, to redshirt some guys. And it goes back to the question was asked about pass rushing. You know, you look at uh, Darius Carter, you look at Corey Jones now. They're, they're six, five plus guys that have a chance to have had a chance to get in the weight room and get bigger, stronger. So it's important that those type of guys now, you know, step up and emerge because you know, Eli is gone, Max is gone. So it's a next man up mentality, whether it's an injury or players leaving the program for whatever reason. Um, I know you guys uh, felt you had a shortage in offensive linemen in terms of the numbers. Um, can you talk a little bit about these three guys and what they bring to the table? And, and do you think any of them uh, could possibly see the field this year? Well, you know, the big thing for us, you know, Jerry, was that uh, our offensive line, there's about 10 of them that have played in college football games, and that's, that's, a, that's a plus for us. I know we were talking about who's playing and the, the starters and all that, but the way it played out is that there's 10 of them that, that played in college football games against pretty good opponents. And so when you have that going into spring practice, and we're hoping that, that uh, Jay Whitmire, you know, um, that he heals up and maybe, maybe limited you know, towards uh, things that he can do in spring practice and then hope to have him by full speed, you know, by the uh, start of August camp. Th those are those. That's a. It's a strength and it's a positive, you know, for us. Um, you know, the guys that are here, Proctor. Um, you know, as I said before, Grant Polk is as a mid-year guy who will have a chance to, uh, you know, to to be involved in spring practice. And Bischoff. You know, those are guys that can play multiple positions. They're big guys. You look at them. They're almost. They're about 300 pounds. And it's hard sometimes to to get linemen that are that big, but they're made that way right now. And so now um, that gives us some, some versatility as far as where they go, where they play. You mentioned the uh, the departures of, of Eli and Max. Can you, what were those late discussions like, and, and how do you see yourself kind of filling those needs? You know, those two young men made decisions that were best for them. You know, I love, would love to have had them and, and helped them finish their careers here. Um, but uh, they're gone. And so now we move on to the ones that are here. And, you know, it's important to know that you know, the style of defense that we play, it's a defense that uh, applies a lot of pressure. And, you know, a lot of players can have opportunities to make plays. And we talked about Corey and, and Darius, a guy like Chris Peace, who we talked about as a guy that got redshirted, who 
is a relentless player. Um, those guys have a chance now to step up and fill some of those roles, uh, have a chance to step up and, and be significant in helping this team win football games. And, and I feel confident about uh, those guys that had to sit and watch, and now it's their turn. Coach, I feel like I ask you this question every year, so I apologize in advance, but uh, every coach on signing day loves their class, thinks it's the greatest thing ever. But were there any needs that you guys weren't able to to, to fill in this class? What, where did you? Where were some, maybe some misses or some places where you, you know, maybe you would have liked to have had another two or three guys here, you would have liked to have had that? What were some things about this class that maybe you, you look back on you and you wish that you could have had? You know, Brad, we, we were involved with uh, really a couple contested you know, battles with some players, you know, and we lost one that ended up going to Stanford. It was between us and Stanford. We lost a safety that was between us and Penn State. He's an in-state guy, and he went to Penn State. So there were some significant battles of, of players that we felt pretty good about if we could, you know, get them, you know, on our team. But, you know, that, that's the way recruiting goes. It, it didn't happen for us. But I'd say outside of that, you know, a quarterback, receivers. And, and let me back up. I would say that one of the biggest recruits is the, the fifth year opportunity that TJ Thorpe provides for us, um, you know, from North Carolina. I mean, that, he speaks to a special teams guy and also a wide receiver as well. And the other one would be uh, Dominic Terrell, who redshirted last year. He's another guy that, you know, that, uh, that has an opportunity that has played in a lot of games. And, you know, we know on the defensive side, Trey Nicholson is a guy that, although he played a game last year, he was able to secure a medical redshirt. He's healthy and he's back. So I know it's about the signing class now, but it's also about you know the three that, that didn't play that uh, will help us, uh, help us this next season. If I'm not mistaken, Thornhill was the first member of this class to commit. He's been committed for two years. He's kind of been under the radar, led his team to state championships. Uh, is that kind of a sleeper of sorts for you? If you just look at Juan's just accolades in high school. I mean, it's it's outstanding. You know, he's he's out. My my son tells me he's got man, coach, dad, he's got a bunch of YouTube hits on a dunk that he made in one of his high school games. You know, when you're an all-state basketball player and MVP and all-state football player MVP, that's significant at any level. And uh, you know, he is a young man that uh, committed early, knew what he wanted early, stayed committed, stayed strong in his commitment. Is, uh, is a man that will represent this school you know, very well. But he's a very good football player. And you know, we have him at the safety position right now, but we'll see. I mean, a lot of these positions will dictate where they end up playing the first couple practices. But i um, very, very excited about having Juan as, as part of the, the Cavalier family. Like when you're coming off a couple of losing seasons, is it? Have you experienced more difficulty on the recruiting trail with you know, negative recruiting stuff? Like, I know that always happens, but w what has that been like? Have you have any specific examples that, that you've experienced because the success in the field hasn't always happened? You know, there's always negativity that goes on the recruiting trail. And I, I focus my attention on the fact that uh, you come join this, this team, you know, a, a team that was close in several games. You'd be a part of uh, a competitive situation where you can play and help us win. Um, you, you, want that, uh, you want that young man that desires a first-class education. And so you always have to deal with components that are out there, uh, but you also want to attract those type of young men that are, you know, that are gravitating towards you know, the people that can help them develop, the school, life after football, the opportunity you know, for friends and family to see them play. And this group, as I said before, it, it was a strong message that they wanted to be a part of something. And as I've, I've said, you know, the guys that were the best recruiters on our team for this class were the Andrew Browns and the Quinn Blandings and guys like that. And so um, we will continue to keep, uh, you know, bringing along a recruiting class and, and, the, and the idea that, that um, you know, opportunities to play here are here for you and come be a part of something that can be special, get a world-class degree, and then help this team win football games. Was there a re-energize when your, your committed guys, when it was announced you were coming back for next season, was that kind of a renew some life and you on the recruiting trail? And did you see that from your, from your commitments at that time? Well, again, I feel, I feel very thankful and humble the fact that I, you know, I will be the head coach of this team next season. You know, you can speak to the players about how they felt. I'm, you know, I, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm indebted to 
President Sullivan and, and Craig Littlepage. Um, very respectful of the job that I have to do. It's important that we win football games. It's important that we perform. It's important that we put the best players out there that can help us do those things. And a lot of these players want to win football games. A lot of these guys want to perform. And, uh, and that's the exciting thing about it. Uh, I'm always an energetic, positive type of guy, but it does, it lends itself to when you add two really quality coaches, you, you, uh, you, know, you continue on where you left off in terms of getting better, being in games that, that we have to win next year uh, when, when you're that close again. And so there's a lot of positive things that are going on. And I address those things, you know, the things that, that, uh, that can help us win are the things that we worry about. You might want to tell them you mentioned that President Sullivan, that she actually made time out of her schedule to help you recruit. Well, actually, one of our large weekends, she was there and uh, she addressed uh, the entire uh, re recruiting family there. And that was, and that was significant and that was, that was awesome because uh, the message that she gave was, was something that uh, resonated with a lot of parents and particularly the players as well. Mike, uh, with Max and Eli leaving early, there are more holes to fill on defense than there might have been. On the other side of the ball, though, you have, uh, you have more stability, more returning players. With Grayson and Matt back, how big a deal is that going into spring ball, just having the guys who took most of the snaps? That hasn't always been the case in the spring here. No, no, it hasn't. You know, and we talked, I believe, this time last year, we talked about David and Grayson having been guys that have played in college football games. Well, more so than anything now, Matt and, and, and uh, Grayson have played against some really good teams uh, and uh, played in uh, football games that, you know, have been significant for this program. So having two really experienced quarterbacks does help us tremendously. Um, with Coach Fairchild, again, what they know about the scheme and the system, you know, they're out there working hard right now. And so that is uh, the quarterback position has to be, it must be a positive aspect for this team in order for us to succeed. And I, I believe those two young men, you know, you also have a guy like Corin Cutler who got red shirted. Now it's time to see what kind of arm he has. You know, so uh, feel good about the quarterback position. You mentioned Jay Whitmore and his surgeon. I understand uh, uh, Moore has also had his uh, shoulder worked on. I don't know how soon he'll be available, but do you see him as an end or a tackle next year with, with what you lost at end? You know, he, he Mike Moore. Mike, Moore. He, uh, Mike played uh, inside and outside, and, uh, you know, he's probably more suited to be an outside guy, although he has the ability to play inside. Where he ends up will be dictated upon uh, the, the development of, you know, of, of a guy like Dante Wilkins, uh, the development you know, of guys that, uh, that have played inside, Andre Miles Redman, um, you know, Andrew Brown. You know, so where he ends up may be where you know, he'll help us the most. But right now he has to be, get healed and get back and get ready to, to help us in, in August because he'll miss, he'll miss spring practice with his shoulder. You know, last year you had those you uh, notes that you gave to everybody. Was there any specific message this time? I, I can't tell you this time. It's a secret. Thank you. <laughs> Coach, I know it's not a need at the moment. I was just curious of your philosophy on giving us uh, what What's your opinion on that? You know, <laughs> excuse me? Yeah, you know. Right, and, and, and coming in, first, the philosophy was this is a great place for young men that want to come to school. You also try to have a, a profile of guy that will come that's also a pretty good kicker. And then as he performs on the field, then you award him a scholarship. That, uh, that philosophy changed uh, last year in that, you know, you want to get at least three scholarship kickers in your program or have those type of numbers for those guys. And what happened was, um, Ian Fry was, a, was awarded a scholarship. Alex Vazenilek, did I get that right, Doug? Okay, he was, um, you know, just Alex. Um, thank you, I appreciate that. He, uh, you know, he was, he was awarded a scholarship. So uh, we will look at scholarship kickers, snappers, whoever it is, because they're one-play football performers. And it's important uh, that uh, the snap be on target, 
um, that the kicks are placed where they need to be, that we make field goals, the kickoffs are where they need to be. And so we will continue to look for young men that, that can provide those. But on our team now, you have Ian Fry returning, you know, who's on, on scholarship. And, and there are, uh, you know, Tyler Shirley, who snapped for us. He's definitely a candidate to be awarded a scholarship. Dylan Sims kicked off for us. He did a nice job. So we're going we're gonna to focus back on what kickers can do and making sure they are the, the, the scholarship caliber type guys. <laughs> You've, uh, <laughs> it's not rare for you to, to go in the 757 and get a, kid, a couple kids from one school. This particular time was Ocean Lakes. Uh, what did you like about those two in particular, a linebacker and a, and a, and a corner? And um, just what do you like about that, that program right now? You've had some success with Ocean Lakes here recently. You know, you want to have the best opportunities in, if you're in state school with all the schools. And, and sometimes it happens and, you know, sometimes it, it, it doesn't. But particularly with Ocean Lakes, there's a history with, you know, with Eli, with uh, Corwin Cutler, you know, with Giovanni Simmons, you know, being a, being a, a linebacker, that uh, very smart individual, very tough, playing on a couple state championship you know, teams. Um, you know, TJ was a guy that uh, knew a lot of our players, you know, not just from, from Ocean Lakes, but from Bayside and, and other schools. And uh, the fact, again, I said, you know, that, that Chris Beatty, had him uh, committed at Wisconsin and then happened to be here was something that was also a factor that helped us. So, you know, you do have opportunities with different schools, and Ocean Lakes was one of them, has been one of them for us uh, in the last few years.